Hey guys, Hudson Wild here. Today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about knife safety and how to use your knife properly. You're watching Trail Hacks. When I was just a little guy and my dad gave me my first knife, the most important rule that he taught me was that your blade, your knife, whatever you're using, it's not a toy, but it's a tool. You have to know how to use it properly. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter what kind of blade that you're using. If you know a few important rules, you can implement it with any kind of blade that you're using. There's two basic kinds of knives. We have your folding blades and we have your straight blades. A folding blade, the blade folds into itself, into the handle. And um, man, it's pretty useful because it can collapse. It's more compact, you can fit into small places. But the complexity with this is that it does fold. To open it, for this one, it's easy. There's a spring attached, flips right open by itself. For other knives though, you have to grab it, pull it open. Your fingers are away from the blade at all times. There's no way that you can cut yourself. Closing it is a little bit more complicated. You have to put your thumb in front of the blade for a short time to flip this little lever sideways. Once you've kind of broken the blade, it's starting to close. You remove your hand. It's holding the, the handle down here. There's no way that your fingers could get cut because they're all underneath the blade. And you close it, boom, done. Next, we're gonna talk about the straight blade. <clears throat> and as the name implies, it's a straight blade. So the blade does not fold into the handle, it just stays permanently straight. So with a straight blade, it always has a sheath. You don't want to be walking around without this knife sheath. Always make sure that's sheathed until the time of use. Now, with the sheath, you want it to be somewhere visible. A lot of guys think it's cool to, to keep their knife tucked back here, but then what happens is they can pull out their knife easily enough, but then when they return to put their knife back into the sheath, man, they can't see it, they don't have a visual. So they might actually poke themselves in their back and their bum. That's not very wise. Have your sheath somewhere visible, usually in front of you, where you can unsheath it very easily. When you return it, you can see, have a good visual, sheath it, very safe, you're not gonna get hurt at all. The next point about knife safety is your surroundings. You need to be aware. So as you can see around me, I got nobody except a tree behind me. But oftentimes, man, you're surrounded by your friends, your buddies. Last thing you wanna do is be sharpening a stick, cutting an object, you slip, your knife goes back this way, boom, you just hit your friend very dangerous so always be aware of your radius and a good way to do that is just to take your hand swing it around you oh I got no one I got a tree behind me I got no people though so I'm safe this is a good safety radius for whittling for carving for preparing food whatever I'm doing I'm using my knife for I know that I'm safe next thing you want to do again this is very simple but a lot of people don't utilize this rule always cut away from yourself hold the grip firmly you don't want to be like holding it like this because then, man, it's loose. Again, you don't have control of the blade. Hold your knife tightly, firmly, cut away from yourself. Then you'll always be safe. The next rule is to keep your blade sharp. A dull knife is a lot more dangerous than a sharp one, so take care of your knife. Once you use it a lot, it gets dull, sharpen it. There's actually a lot of different ways to sharpen a knife with a wet stone. I'm going to show you the way that I prefer. I don't like any technique that involves slicing into the stone. You have to have your angle really precise because tilt it too much down, your knife is gonna be cutting into the stone and you'll chip your blade. Or if there's inconsistencies with the stone, a little, a little lump, a little bump in the stone might chip your blade as well. I prefer flipping the blade backwards as such, pulling away from the stone. That way the stone is just sharpening your blade. It's not, you're not cutting into the stone itself. I like to hold the stone at the very edge here so that my fingers aren't anywhere near the blade but still have control over the sharpening stone. But the biggest tip is to find the right angle, degree of angle, in which the blade rests against the stone. The way I do that is to put the back of the blade, if it's resting in the center of my forefinger and against the stone, I know I have the, the correct degree angle. For this knife, since the blade is slightly curved, I start with pointing kind of the blade in the middle of the stone here, and then kind of make a half moon circle here. That way the whole blade is sharpened. I don't do it too fast, it's just nice, slow and controlled, but consistent. Now I'm gonna switch sides and do the same thing. Only thing is I'm gonna be pulling back now. So the same movement, same technique, except that the stone is gonna be touching the bottom of the knife blade first, ending with the top of the knife blade. One thing always comes to mind as I sharpen my knives. Uh, in, in the book of Proverbs uh, 27, 17, uh, it says that a man sharpens another man like iron sharpens iron. What that means is that, that men are supposed to encourage each other, build each other up. They're supposed to refine each other. 
right? It's, it's about community and the proximity. And you and your buddies, when you get together, yeah, you're encouraging each other, building each other up spiritually, refining each other, pointing out the flaws in each other, to build each other up, right? And it's the same way that, that, that your sharpening stone sharpens your knife, right? It's two hard objects, but man, combined together, it refines your blade, it sharpens it, it prepares it for good use. And that's what we're supposed to do with each other. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video and learned something new, like and subscribe below. If you're interested in learning more about Trail Life USA and maybe potentially joining the troop, go to traillifeusa.com. If you're interested in learning more about the Wow Brothers and some of our awesome adventures in the jungles over in Southeast Asia and here in the States, go to wowbrothersproductions.com. Thanks guys.